the message today is about accepting an invitation. We have the story of Zacchaeus. And we find that there's an invitation taking place. Jesus actually invites himself along. But if you look in reality, it's Zacchaeus that actually went out of his way to get invited. Have you ever been in a place where you've longed to be invited somewhere and you were not invited? Anybody had that sad moment in their life? Yeah. Yes, there's a few faces around. So let's pray and ask God for an understanding of what he wants to share with us today. Lord Jesus, coming before you this morning, we've heard the story of Zacchaeus. I pray now, Lord, that you help us understand what's actually taking place and what's the meaning and purpose for each one of us. Lord Jesus, come and seek us and save us. Help us to know what you want us to see today and speak through me in this moment. Amen. You're invited to get that invitation. I was in primary school. Gary Jones was having his birthday party. <laughs> Gary Jones was the coolest guy in school. This is Tarawana Primary School for those who don't know. And I wanted to go to his birthday party. And I knew that a whole bunch of other kids were invited and I was not. Now, I know, poor me. I was so sad because it was building up to the weekend and I still hadn't got an invitation. And so this is what I did. I wanted to go to the birthday party. So I rocked up to Gary Jones's house on Saturday morning and asked his mother if I could help set up for the party. <laughs> you all think that's strange, but I wanted to go to that party. So I did. And you know what? Gary Jones's mother said, that's a good idea. And so for the rest of the morning and the day, I helped set up for the birthday party. And guess what? She said, you should come to the birthday party. <laughs> and I said, thank you. That would be lovely. I'd love to do that. <laughs> what do you think Gary Jones thought? <laughs> and the others that knew I were not, was not invited. But I want to illustrate this story to you because how hungry, how desperate, you might say I was desperate as a child. Yeah, I was needy too, desperate and needy, but I wanted to go and I wasn't afraid to do whatever it took to get there. When I think about it now, I think that was a bit, you know, over the top. But I did it for a reason, and I tell you this story because we're going to see some of that coming out in the, in the Bible passages that I have this morning. Because Zacchaeus, he went out of his way. He went out of his way. He was desperate. Something was going on. To get invited, you are invited. Here's the story. For those of you who don't know the story, Jesus entered Jericho, he was passing through. And a man there was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. Can I just, I just want to stop here because sometimes we read that, those terms tax collector. We don't understand the context. I want to give you a context to help you understand. Tax collectors in this time in Israel worked for the Roman government. They were Israelites that had betrayed their people and were taking money and protected by the Romans 
and were taking not only what they, their cut was, but often taking more because they were protected. If I can contextualize, imagine if all of a sudden Australia is taken over by another country, we'll call it country X, right? All of a sudden we are totally controlled by country X and country X says to you and me, I want your tax money. We look at country X and say, no way. Country X gets a few of us, I'll use Craig for example, <laughs> all right? Craig, now, he does work for the tax department, by the way, all right? <laughs> Craig, for example, now says, country X, I'm going to work for you and I'm going to make our Australian people pay me money and give me extra. Who likes Craig now? <laughs> Anyone the big booze? Yeah. All right. That's Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus had betrayed his own people, betrayed them and said, hey, look, you've got to give me your money. In fact, it says he's a chief tax collector, not just an ordinary one, a chief one. That means he's shown others how to do this. He was extremely hated. So that will give you some context. And he was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. Kids, tick, you got that right. So he ran ahead and he climbed a sycamore tree, a sycamore fig tree to see him. And since Jesus was coming that way, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and he saw him. Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter. What is their comment? He's gone to be the guest of a sinner. In fact, I'm sure their language was more than that. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I'm going to pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. And for the son of man came to seek and save the lost. That's key. Son of man, Jesus has come to seek and save the lost. Seek and save the lost. I want you to hold on to that and think about it. Humility is key to this story. Read Luke chapter 18. You can do this at home, but I'm going to give you a snapshot of what's taking place. Luke 19 is where we find Zacchaeus. Luke 18 is the chapter before it. This is so important to the context of this story. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. What does that mean? It means this is Jesus' final journey from Galilee, walking down three days journey through to Jordan, coming to Jericho. You have to go to Jericho before you go up to Jerusalem. He's on his way to Jerusalem. What does that mean? It means he knows that he's on his last walk. He's up to Jerusalem where he knows they're going to kill him. He knows they're going to they're whip him. They're going to break him to pieces and put him on the cross for you and for me. Jesus knows. Just think about this for the moment. He knows where he's going. He actually speaks this in chapter 18. His heart must be in this torn place and so what is he going to do he's got to teach as he's going for people to understand what's taking place so as he's talking and walking he's giving some imagery and some understanding of how it is for you and I to find that place 
of freedom with Jesus. So the very first story he talks about is a woman who is desperate for some justice. She's a widower. She's desperate for justice. So she keeps banging on the door of a judge. Please help me. Please help me. Help me, please help me, help me, help me. And the judge is so sick of it that he says, fine, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. And so that imagery, understanding Jesus is talking about praying and not giving up. Keep asking for justice in your own journey. Keep asking for freedom. Keep persistently praying and saying, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need your help. That's the imagery Jesus gives as he's walking to Jerusalem. Don't stop praying. Don't give up. Then he, the very next thing is about prayer again. Remember this woman in humility and desperate said, help me. And now he is, talks about prayer. He talks about two people standing there praying. One's a Pharisee, like a religious leader, who's standing there and he's, he's, you know, oh, I'm so glad I'm not like this and I'm not like this. Thank you, Lord. I'm not that, 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 that. But next to him is a guy who they call a sinner who's just struggling so much. And in his humility, he just puts his head down and he says, Lord, I've blown it. I've blown it. I know. I know my life is not good. Please accept me as I am. And the beauty of that story is that Jesus says that the one who just humbles himself completely and says, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Jesus says, You're, he's the one that God's going to listen to because it's about heart. And then the next one is Jesus talks about the children. come. All the children are coming up to visit Jesus and others are saying, take him away, take him away. And Jesus says, no, children come to me. And he's praying for them because it says, you don't understand the kingdom unless you understand it like a child. And then we have the next story is a rich young ruler who many of you will know. He's this young man, lots of money, asked Jesus that question, how do I inherit eternal life? has his story with internal life, and Jesus challenges him to sell what he has, drop everything and come and follow him. And we find this rich young man just turning around and says, no, I can't do that, and walks away. And then the very next story is a blind beggar just outside of Jerusalem. Just before, sorry, just outside of Jericho, before walking into Jericho, there's a blind man yelling and saying, hearing, hearing, hearing noise, hearing about Jesus coming into Jericho, yelling and saying, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And Jesus says, What do you want? He said, I like to see. And the blind beggar is fully healed. That's the context leading into Zacchaeus climbing a tree. That's the story leading into this taking place. Why does Jesus look at Zacchaeus up in a tree? Why is Jesus looking at that, this guy who's up in a tree? Because he's fully humbled himself. He wants to see Jesus. He wants to know who is this. We see this place of humility, this woman at the beginning saying to the, to the judge, help me. In, in her humility, she comes. We find, we find this place where just this humble prayer, please forgive me, and he's heard. We find this place where children come who are absolutely rejected. And Jesus says, come, be like the children. And then we find this place where, where this, this blind man just before Jericho, he's just like, son of David, have mercy on me. You, you know, me. I'll take whatever you've got. And here we have Zacchaeus, who's just 
climbing a tree. He must have heard Jesus was coming. Everybody would have been excited. There's a blind man he can now see. Zacchaeus, what? What? We heard some stuff from Tanner this morning. We're really excited about what happened. Do we get it? Are we willing to be humble enough to ask for it? The irony of the two stories is we find also this rich young man who's asked to sell what he's got to follow Jesus. And he says, no, And we find Zacchaeus saying, oh, I'm going to give half of my money away. Heart is so important here. So Zacchaeus climbs a tree. Jesus entered Jericho. There was a man named Zacchaeus, chief collector, and he was wealthy. You know that story. He wanted to see who Jesus was because he was short. He couldn't see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. He's a rich man. The community knows. He's run ahead. He's climbed a tree. Talk about desperately wanting to see and know. Humbled himself, wanted to be seen, wanted to understand, didn't care what anybody else thought anymore. And when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and he said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today because Jesus could see straight through. This guy's desperate. This guy's interested. This guy wants to know me. He doesn't care what anybody else thinks. So he came down at once and, and you saw him gladly. All the people saw this and they said, no way. A guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said, Lord, look here. I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. What a transformation. What a difference. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and save the lost. Jesus is walking into Jerusalem. The son of man come to seek and save the lost. This is his message as he's walking up to Jerusalem, going through Jericho, understanding that he's going to be Beaten and destroyed for you and for me. To seek and save the lost. If you're lost, you're invited. If you're lost, you're invited. Jesus is looking for true heart. I said to you earlier about my story of trying to get to this Gary Jones's party, right? I did whatever I could to get to this party. But isn't the same principle, are you doing whatever you can to be invited to the celebration with Jesus? Jesus is looking at your heart. Do you truly, truly want to be with him? Are you willing to drop all your pretenses and say, I am desperate for you, Jesus, and I know that I'm lost? Because Jesus brings a story out in this in Luke 14. And this is what he says. He says, when one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, blessed is the one who will eat at the feast of the kingdom of God. And then Jesus said, well, let me tell you a story. There was a certain man preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. And at the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who'd been invited, come, because everything is ready. This is Jesus giving an, an understanding of our invitation to join him, to drop everything we have and say, I accept you, Lord Jesus. This is what he says. The party's ready. Invitations have gone out. 
but they all alike began to make excuses. The first one said, I just bought a field. I must go and see it. Please excuse me. He wants to go and see his field more than go to a party with Jesus. Another said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Business. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. And the servant came back and reported this to his master. And then the crowd, then the owner of the house became angry and he ordered his servants, go out quickly into the streets and the alleys of the towns and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you have ordered has been done and there is still room. This is a powerful story and a powerful picture. Jesus is saying that those who are struggling, those who are lost, those who don't have the hope, find hope in him. They find hope in him. We can get so caught up in our pretenses. We can get so caught up in our protectiveness. We can get so caught up not wanting to be embarrassed about who we are. Or we, we have this covering that we, oh, we're fine, but really we're not fine. We are lost and we need to be lost and we need to know Jesus loves us. Amen. 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 C.T. Studd wrote this. Some wish to live within the sound of church and chapel bell. I want to run a rescue shop within a yard of hell. I'm going to read that again. Some wish to live within the sound of church and chapel bell to be in that place of comfort. But I want to run a rescue shop within a yard of hell. C.T. Studd was born into great wealth. Great wealth. He ended up going to China as a missionary. He's got amazing stories behind him. Some wish to live within the sound of church and chapel bell. I want to run a rescue shop within a yard of hell. If you are lost, you are invited. It's time for us to be in that place. To be in that place where we're not concerned about what anybody else thinks, but we're more concerned about what Jesus thinks. And when he comes to invite you, be willing to respond to his invitation. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, your invitation to each one of us is for us to recognize that we haven't got it all together, for us to recognize that often our life is a total mess for us to recognize that you are the one that can bring all things together, that we recognize that you want to invite us to an amazing party with you. You ask us to drop all our pretenses, to take away the masks that we wear, and you ask us to be real in our faith, to be real in our journey, to be humble enough to just seek you and not to be afraid of what others think and what others say. Let us have a new pride about us. That pride is about you being in our lives more than the pride that we carry to make ourselves look better. Bring humility to us and a deeper understanding that in our lostness, you find us and you take us on a new journey. Thank you for your blessings. Amen.